Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the show. Monday night. It's tough times never last, but tough people do. I'm Michael Gazzilni. Thank you very much for tuning in once again. And uh, yeah, life's a difficult uh, journey, isn't it? Uh, I don't think anyone ever gets uh, goes from point A to point B just being happy all the time. You know, I think um, uh, things are going to happen. Divorce, relationship breakups, ill health, divo um, depression, psychotic episodes. Um, what I like about this show for the last uh, seven years or so, people come, um, they're not wearing those masks, they're authentic and they want to share. Maybe just touch one or two people, maybe a hundred people, just to um, let people know that life is worth life while living. Uh, it's so easy to you know, contemplate suicide, have an early departure, but at the end of the day, we're all going to die one day. Death is going to wipe us out. Uh, there'll come a day when it's your last breath and you'll never know what day it is. Anyway, on tonight's couch, a decent young fella, Daniel Scott. On the 3rd of October 1992, his life changed. Uh, he was unlicensed on a motorbike, he had a head-on collision with another bike. And Daniel, you're here to tell the story, mate. Thank you very much for coming on. Thank you very much, Michael, for having me. I met you in court and uh, we just had a good old chat and stuff, but I was, I was uh, very impressed with your honesty and your kindness you know yeah it's been very tough um i had a bit of a bad um when i was younger my mum and dad split up and um how old how old were you when they split up uh, about three i think is that all yeah and then other things happened to me when i was younger and um what, what happened to you i got molested by an old fella yeah and what got me that he never got punished for it. Never got went through the courts or nothing and um, he's still on the streets to this day. And, and Daniel, there's so much of that going on, you know, that uh, in those days a lot of stuff was brushed under the carpet, you know, yeah. not only with um, sort of friends of the family but also with the Catholic Church. And, and everyone's trying to cover it up, aren't they? You know, they're saying, oh, you, I don't know whether anything happened, you know. We've got to be a bit more fair income about this stuff. And uh, if we know that somebody's um, uh, conducted or was guilty of uh, this filthy, um, appalling sexual conduct, uh, you know, they must be reported. That's what I think. But also at the same time, I think um, that we've got to move on from the past, almost eradicate our past. Yeah? yeah oh, exactly. So, but, but it shows me that it, there's been a lot of issues. Um, tell me, um, so that's what happened. You, uh, mum and dad split up, God bless you, you were only young. Then the sexual um, assault, interference. And, and then the motorbike incident. Can you tell me about that day? What do you remember? Um, actually riding with a mate, we, you know, three of us going for a ride. Um, I remember the, uh, just taking off and the mate in front of me just hit jackets with the other guy because it was a corrugated road and they were going around the boat he was going this way and the other guy was going the other way and they touched, touched jackets and um, I was the one up behind because I was on a road bike and bang, it was oh. all over and um, yeah, I ended up an hour and a half for the ambulance to come and get us. Lucky me mate was an SAE, a state emergency service was he? volunteer, he kept me stable oh. because I lost all my blood so they had to... Um, wait till I was um, stable to actually take me on to God get bless surgery. You. Was this at night time or in the nah, morning? No, during the day, a hot day, about during 29 degrees or something. Because you grew up in country Victoria, didn't you? Yeah, up in Stall, yeah. Yeah, so it was just boys mucking around. Back in them days, the police used to let us go. As mm. long as we weren't on the main highways, sure. you know what I mean? We were just having fun. We weren't causing no. robbing people or taking drugs or anything like that. No. Just having a bit of fun. Just a terrible, terrible accident. Were the other people as injured as you? Uh, the other guy, uh, not physical injuries, but he did get a few injuries. Yeah. Do you and still see those boys? Uh, the guy who actually hit. No, he actually just passed away a couple of weeks ago. Did he? Cancer, yeah. Oh. But he had a lot of accidents beforehand. He was did always he? riding motorbikes, but that one sort of slowed him down a bit. Yeah. It was so about 170 impact. 3rd of October 1992, you, you were 17. 16. 16, you're 37 now. Yeah. Um, Daniel, uh, what were the injuries? Well, my leg was broken about 100 and something breaks. Yeah. My kneecap was found in the motor of the bike. Oh. My leg took all the impact. So his wheel, they reckon, was about 160 a K impact. This leg was bent up behind me back. They reckon with my big toe, I could touch the back of my ear. 
Um, I've got an arm that doesn't work. I ripped the nerves out of the spinal cord. And on impact from getting thrown, my helmet exploded on impact. Your, which arm doesn't work? My right arm. And it, well, it just sits there, does it? Yeah, rip the nerves to actually contract the muscles to give that lift. So, so w w what do you call yourself? A, um, in, you know, sort of technical medical terms. A uh, there's so much allergic, paraplegic. Um, uh, very, very disabled. Dis disabled. Yeah, I got 78 percent through TAC. That was the impairment. Yeah, you, oh, that's the payment you got. You got to pay out as well. Uh, yeah, exactly. But 78 percent. 78% stable because I was a butcher right. boner at the time. Right. And I, it's a bit hard to be a one arm butcher, and I was right handed. So I had to learn how to talk as well because I lost everything. God bless you. Well, uh, and, and after that, you went through some, some extremely difficult times. A lot and of for pain. The, and for the dough to come, that probably took a few years, didn't it? Yes, it did. And, it didn't and, tell, last. and tell me this, and, 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 and a lot of people think, oh, yeah, that's bullshit, Michael. Money does bring happiness, but. Uh, but how long for, you know? I, I always think the holidays and, and the nice car or the, or the lovely partner, uh, it's, it's so temporary, isn't it? It's such a, um, it's um, so impermanent temporary and we get bored. It, 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 does money bring you happiness? No, it doesn't. It uh, just takes away the boredom for the day because when you're not working and you've got a lot, you're in a lot of pain and mm. you're on, that meant different medications, you're on morphine, this, this, oh, mm. I've just had, that amounts of medication. The doctors will say, here, yeah, go away. Mm. Here, go away without helping you with the problem. They just give, give, give. And it's only a temporary fix. Sure. You know what I mean? It only puts a, th a, a um, screen over you. Mm, um, yeah, I, I appreciate how you're sharing all this because you've gone through a lot of lows and you, you, you've, oh, man. You, you know, yeah. you've tried to take your life a few times. Sure. Yeah. Lots of times, you know, because but 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 life is not always fair. But it's it's, it's pretty exciting though, isn't it? Oh, exactly. I'll, you know, I'm lucky to have a beautiful fiance named Marissa, and Ooh, um, she's over there. Yeah, and we're looking at getting married next year. So wow. So, so no more plans on taking your life, no? Nah, nah. I'll, I'm here for a reason. God obviously left me left me on the earth to do something so yeah, I reckon so too. And 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 you know, folks, we'll talk about uh, his uh, his journey, but he's a Top bloke, Daniel Scott will be back shortly. Welcome back to the show, I'm Michael Gazilny. Thank you very much for watching all these years. I'm meeting so many people around Melbourne, even in Sydney. Um, uh, a couple of uh, months ago, somebody watched the show somehow, but um, it just makes me realise, you know, having been around the criminal justice system for over 25 years now, how many beautiful people there are and how many beautiful people are going through some very, very difficult issues, you know? Parents losing their children to um, leukaemia and, um, and uh, a lot of people suffering from um, depression and bipolar and... and, um, and it, what inspires me is when people get help and they, uh, they tell people how they feel. No, no use wearing masks and running around all the time saying everything's okay, we're happy, because at the end of the day, uh, your situation will just get worse. You know, I think some of the life issues that I've gone through, some of the difficult times, I always think that everything in my life happens for my maximum benefit, for my maximum benefit, because um, as a criminal defence lawyer, if, uh, if I just go through this airy-fairy lifestyle of everything going great in my life, then I can't relate and I shan't, can't show compassion to other people. So I think when I go through some difficult issues, and I certainly have, folks, um, it's there to make me that little bit stronger. Do you agree, Daniel? Yeah, um, you learn a lot in life. Um, yeah. You have different hurdles in life. And uh, yeah, life's what you make of it. Um, obviously, um, with all the medication and that, I was in a bit of a foam over, um, inform you over my brain um, and just, just was running amok. You're a good speaker, mate. You, you, you speak very well. I noticed that when I saw you at Sunshine Court, you know, you're a good speaker. You, um, you, you're nice to... In Interesting to listen to, good story sh to, um, storyteller. Tell me about the story about how you ended up doing three months uh, in prison. Well, I um, was on uh, morphine, a high dose of morphine, and they started dropping me down. I ended up meeting this guy, and he introduced me to heroin, and um, got addicted to heroin very bad. Lived in the car for a year in Melbourne here, just in the car. 
Um, well, you're so down. I always wonder, you know, I, I can understand why people might take a line or have a joint or, you know, try ecstasy or something, but, but actually sort of um, preparing the needle and then injecting that stuff into your arm. And, and with heroin, you sort of just know you're going to get hooked straight away, don't you? Oh, yeah, it's uh, you, like morphine. Were you that down, you just thought, stuff it, I'll, I'll just give anything a shot? Yeah, I, yeah, I just didn't care, you know what I mean? No. Anything to take the pain away, you'll do. Right. Just to take that throb. It's like someone with a baseball bat smashing your leg, that's how. So, so after you, you, you had your first shot of heroin... Yeah, I wanted more and more. When did you want more? The next day? The next couple of hours. Did you ring him up straight away and say, I want more of this stuff? After I uh, had to get money... It's because it's an expensive habit, isn't it? Yeah, it was, we were up about yeah, four grand. Four grand? A week. A week? Mm. Wow. So then you had to get money for the heroin, yeah, and I'm that's when you went to crime. Crime. Actually, I was just a getaway driver to a robbery, and the guy actually got... He was, he, the police wouldn't give him bail until he gave up the driver. Actually, he got bail that day and died. OD'd. No. Yeah, so the, I got all the charges. What year was that? Um, 2000, I think 2000. Is that amazing? How old were you then? I'm not too sure. 27 or something. Yeah, yeah. But uh, your, your record before that wasn't that bad, was it? I had a little, little bit, little stuff. stuff nothing major. Behavioural yeah, stuff. Yeah, nothing. Willful. Nothing bad. You nothing know what I mean? Bad, bro. Yeah, no, no you, murdering or no. stuff like that. You've got a very kind heart, but I think when you're a bit down and that, and um, you were drinking a bit back then, weren't you? Yeah, drinking. Yeah, a lot of Bundy. Yeah, a lot of Bundy, and um, and so there was this cocktail of drugs and alcohol. Yes. And where did you go to the Commonwealth Bank or something? Was it to this for this getaway? Yeah, um, the Commonwealth Bank at the. Um, a lady was pulling out money and he was a standover man in Melbourne mm. and there was some undercover jacks walking down and they knew his head. So he put a knife to her throat and demanded the money that she pulled out and I was waiting around the corner at the Hyatt uh -huh. and we had a chase of the police and um, I got away from them. You got away? Yeah. Jeez, you could have had your second um, near fatal accident in a car, couldn't you? Because you oh, would yeah. have been going very high speeds. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was just giving it everything they had. Were you? But you don't think... No. Oh, look, now I think I'm a dickhead and, doing and it. And you would have been spaced out too because you would have been on yeah, on, on grog? Grog, drugs, um, pills and heroin. God, so it's just lucky that you didn't kill yourself or anyone else. Yeah. And um, and then they caught up with you a few months later. Yeah, actually the car was in my dad's name. My dad actually got interviewed first. Oh, they would have come with a warrant and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, um, he goes, well, my son's got the car in Melbourne. Oh, so, so they came and got you? Yeah, got me in... Uh, County court or magistrates? I just went to magistrates and, you know, you get, uh, you can get bail. Mm -hmm. I pulled the 30 days and said I might as well just do the time. Oh, the appeal. And I'm glad I did. Cause you I, didn't appeal, you just went straight no, in. No, I'm glad I did because I got to see both sides of the world. Nice. Where did you go? I went to Port Phillip. Okay. And, it, and everyone says, oh, it's hard, it's hard. Mm -hmm. But it, it's what you make of it. Sure. And people didn't pick on me anyway because no. of my disability. Sure. should have to be a low person to, to hit someone that's defenceless like myself. Sure. And it's certainly a place you never want to go back to. No, oh, yeah. I no. never touched heroin since. No. When you came out of prison, what, how, did you, um, how did you change? It, was, that, was that the turning point? The turning point for a while and then something else happened. What happened after that? Uh, just... Some crazy ex-girlfriends I went out with, my family lent them money and this and this and because uh, I come from a good family mm -hmm. and um, they just giving me more headaches than I needed. The girls? Or? Yeah, just the girls and um, yeah, I just couldn't handle it no more because I can't handle too much stress. I start no. going crazy and... Um, yeah. That's because yeah. of my head injury. When obviously, when you, you, you hit I suppose, your head, I suppose Daniel, for a while they had, had a bit of dough. There was a few people hanging around, wasn't there? Lots. Yeah. How much? Yeah, three hundred fifty thousand. All right. So, that, so people they, they sniff that and they, they, they and they want to be um, around you, yeah. I was closer actually, and then I got me disablement, so it was about half a mil. And so, people, yeah, all of a sudden, you had more friends. Yeah. And is it funny, folks? Yeah, it doesn't really matter how you make your money. Some people don't even make it the honest way. But I remember the old underworld folks, you know, they'd be hanging around the Crown and uh, different places, but they'd always have um, 
all their followers, you know, well, you've got all the dough, people want to know you. It's funny how it works. We'll be back very shortly with a decent fella, Daniel Scott. He'll be sharing his, some uh, stories about his journey. Welcome back to the show Monday night. I'm Michael Kazilny. Love and best wishes to everybody watching. I uh, hope you're having a, uh, a good night. If you're not having a good night and you're suffering at the moment, just go through the fire. Tomorrow is a fresh day. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always amazed about uh, antidepressants. Uh, in America, I read the other day, $20 billion a year, and that's increasing 20% everywhere. It's uh, depression and uh, bipolar, mental health issues. It's going through the roof, and I wonder, you know, what's happened to society? Is it, uh, have we made it too complex? Is everything too expensive? Are we always chasing, chasing, you know, the, when this happens, when, you know, I, th I think what we really need to do is embrace simplicity and just go to back to basics and realise that this moment is quite perfect, quite perfect, uh, rather than chasing temporary pleasures all the time. Yeah? Yeah, Cause it, definitely. It, because, you know, some people waste the first 50 years of their life just chasing, you know. I knew this uh, one couple, they had the big house and uh, the tennis court they never used. They had their false, uh, pretentious set of friends who loved them because they, uh, you know, because these people had some money. Uh, these friends of mine travelled seven continents around the world to find happiness and pleasure. You know what they said at the end? They said, look, it took us all this time to find out that um, that happiness is an inside job rather than changing the externals all the time. Isn't that amazing? You can travel, travel around seven continents and, and find that it doesn't really matter where you are. We, we can be happy quite now, Daniel yeah, Scott. exactly. And that's what I mean. When I was younger, at nine, I got adopted in by the show family. You know, the carnival people? Yeah. And I travelled Australia and Australia that many times. Did you? And you, they've got that much money, you know what I mean? But they've still got a good heart. Oh. It's a very different uh, wild lifestyle. You go show to, you know, town to town. How did that happen? Rides. Because uh, mum and dad split up. I, I ended up getting kicked out of home at nine. Jeez. Because I was an uncontrol. I think being molested, I didn't say nothing to no, no one. You know, I, I didn't think anyone would believe me. So yeah. I was just crazy kid. So Daniel, so it's an amazing story. We, we heard the accident, that, uh, the prison time, and then the, the girlfriends and, 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 you know, the fake friends. It's, it's hard to sort of trusting people, isn't it, when, when people have taken advantage of you so many times. Oh, and they still yeah. try to do to this day and age. Yeah. Because I've not long just got off the um, ice. Yeah, you're saying that when I met you, um, the, the ice. Uh, now, that's a real epidemic, isn't it? That's worse than heroin. Is it? Oh, yeah. Why are so many people on it, do you think? Because it's so addictive, they get the taste for it, and um, that's it. Once, once you have it, you just want more and more. You think you're Superman. Mm. They start going um, psychosis and bang. And it's actually a lot dearer than heroin. It's amazing, isn't it? And the problem is um, so many minds are disturbed already, aren't they? Oh, but exactly. But you put a substance like that into the mind, it's, it's, it's almost a hundred times more disturbed, Disturbing, isn't it? Yeah, so it's and, and then people do all sorts of crazy things. It's a devil's drug. It's a devil's curse, yeah? Yeah, oh yeah. And the great news, Daniel, you're off all that stuff. Yes, I am. Yeah. Uh, it's, I feel better in How myself. How long? Two and a half months. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. How did you do it? Oh, through, I went to uh, a few rehabs and a lot of it willpower. Nice. And, and I couldn't see my fiance suffering anymore, you know Yeah, what I mean? she would have gone through a roller coaster ride. We were saying that before, but, uh, you know. She but doesn't deserve that, you know. No. No one deserves to have someone blowing all this money on credit card debt and just... No. What's her lovely name again? Marissa. Marissa. Marissa, do you think he'll stay off the off the stuff, off the gear? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. And um, uh, what do you do with yourself every day? Uh, not much, really, because I haven't worked in 20 years since the accident. But I, I want to do something with my life, maybe write a book, because I've had such a fascinating life, and maybe a movie down the track, or even... No, Going don't to schools and talk to, that's better. Talk that's to better. kids and that's tell better. them he about... He forgot there for a while. The ego is coming out, the movies and the books. But, you know, everyone's getting... I, I did that in my ego stage, you know. I wrote a couple of books. But, um, no, what, what we should do is... This is a good start, yeah? 
you're being authentic. Yeah. Don't worry about the movies. And that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's sort of, you know, you know, that's the ego again, the wonderful me. But forget about all that nonsense. But no, no, we'll go to the schools. We'll, we'll speak to people to, to inspire of, of your journey and, and how you can still find happiness in life, you know? Oh, exactly. Be, they don't fall down the same road as I did. Yeah. Because I had everything. Like, my family would never done it hard. No. So I come from a good blood. You sure. know what I mean? I've been lucky in that respect. We had all the good clothes and what stuff. What did they do? Um, my dad it was in the trucking business. Mm. And then my great uncle was uh, Scott's Trucks, Mount Gambia. Do you see them now, your, your no. parents? Um, they don't hardly come and see me. I think they're disgusted on what I've done. In no. Maybe that's I'm getting it wrong, but I get that picture, you know what I mean? No. So I've got a brother who's a policeman, an uncle who's a policeman. and um, You've got a brother who's a policeman? Yeah. And an Half uncle? Half-brother, yeah. Right. And you meet up with them? Nah. No. But I'm sure there's. Uh, you can love people from a distance, you know what I mean? Yeah, In exactly. fact, you don't need that many friends, folks. You know, a lot of people have got a thousand friends on Facebook and everything, but uh, I always say, if you're in trouble at three o'clock in the morning, can you ring those thousand people? Nah. How many? Five? Nah. Four? Nah. Maybe one, two, three. But look, as long as you've got a, a handful or less of, um, you know, people who, who love and uh, trust you, that, that's all you need. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, I would say, we come here naked and by ourselves and we die naked by ourselves, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah? You really have to own yourself. It seems to me like you're doing that now. Yeah, you're, I'm you're finally, owning yourself. I'm finally uh, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. It's taken 20 years. Yeah. It's taken me a long time to get over the accident because I was a butcher, boner, sure. uh, boxer, football player, mm. carny. Done everything. So you're not worried anymore about the opinions of other people? No. If, I don't care what they think. You know no. what I mean? If they don't like me for but, who I am, they can go. But I think most people who meet you would think you're a lovely, lovely man. A, you know, a decent fella. Yeah, yeah. I've actually gone. You know? My br brother-in-law's... Uh, no, my brother's engagement party and her dad, oh, my brother's girl he's going to marry, her father come up to me and I told him my story and he never touched drugs or been around drugs mm. and I uh, expired him. Yeah. You know what I mean? By my story, he couldn't believe what sure. I've gone through. And, um, and Daniel, there's a t a thousands of um, people out there in Australia who, 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 who've experimented with ice and they're now hooked on it. They're very down, they're getting all these, uh, you know, the mind's playing tricks on them and, and they're thinking, I just want to stop, I hate this, I want to kill myself. What's your advice to those people? Because you've been there. Just to uh, go through the hard yards. Um, yeah, just go through the hard yards. Um, keep positive. Um, talk to someone, like a good close friend that you can trust. And, and you've got to get rid of the old cruel people. You, you got to get... Change your number. Because right. you get hassled and hassled and hassled, and um, so that's and, and even maybe go to an NA meeting or go to get a little bit of counselling because it is hard to get off the ice. Mm. I thought heroin was bad. That's, ice is crazy. That's great advice, folks, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Do something uh, with a determined effort to um, yeah go and see, yeah see somebody, have a bit of fun every day, see a counsellor every week or every two weeks. And that's probably a, a, a path in the right direction. Otherwise, you'll keep on going back. You'll keep on coming back every time you hang around with those people who, uh, who you know, who are on the ice. They'll sell you something, and uh, it'll, be, it'll be up and down like a prostitute's pants, won't they? Oh, exactly. But that's great advice, um, my friend. God bless you having to lift your arm like that. Yeah, no. Nah, but it makes yeah. you who you are. Yeah. Thank you very much, viewers, for watching. I honour and respect you. Uh, if you've got a story to share, please uh, check out our Facebook Tough Times page. Have a lovely night and uh, see you next week. Good night.